need to learn how to do dots properly so that they look nice and neat and a nice consistency of coverage in your dot. The best paints that I have used so far are these ones here and they are called Artiste, Do Crafts Artiste. Uh, they do lots of different colours and different sort of effects like metallic and even just the matte. And I like metallic, I must admit. So I'm going to be using some of those and some other paint that I had lying around. And yeah, I'm going to be looking at this kind of pattern but I'm changing the colours to sort of snowdroppy colours because they're out just now. This is a page in my sketchbook and I'm going to sort of play about with these colours and some patterns here and talk you through how to do it. So when I'm, I'm dotting, I, I don't use very fancy tools. I use a pencil with a rubber at the end. That's my biggest circle. That's my smallest dotting tool is the end of the pencil there. I've got these little sort of dull rods that have been cut down and I use the best end to get a nice flat circle there and just a normal paintbrush as well. So I've actually, before I did the video, I painted a black circle. I just used the end of a plastic cup. Any circle can do really. And I've let that dry so I'm ready to dot on top of that. So when I'm using acrylic paints I tend to use this little trick. I put some water onto kitchen roll and I let that kind of spread out and I put my paints on there so that they don't dry out and it's worked quite well so far. I find you can go through a lot of acrylic paint if you don't do that because it just dries into a sort of plastic blob and that's never good. So when we're dotting you will find that you will get the first dot will have lots of paint on it like that and you might get a little peak and these paints tend to um, die down that little peak will sort of rest the second dot should be the best but this one hasn't really worked out so best so I'll do another one straight after and you'll notice the more dots that I do the paint sort of comes off there so my first dot's actually looking pretty good, I have to say. I'll try it again. Uh, this paint isn't brand new. When you get brand new paint, the second dot tends to be the best. And sometimes you can just pat it down a wee bit. So I'm going to take some gold paint. I'm going to do my first dot quite gently, my second dot I'm doing straight away in the middle. So my second dot there is good and I'm quite happy with that. So I tend to have another sheet of paper at hand so that I can put my first dot down and then my second dot goes on to my rock or to my artwork that I'm doing. And it just gives you that little bit of confidence that it's going to work out pretty good she said. So I'm copying this flower drop mandala I've called it and I'm going to go for my next row. So to do my next row what I'm going to be using is a different colour and I think I will go for green. I think I'll go for this metallic green. Like that. I'm going to move down to this size here and again I'm going to load it up there. I'm going to do my first dot to the side and my next dot I'm going to put up here. Second dot underneath and then I'm going to do a dot left and right. Sometimes I just do a little half press to even it out. Only because my paints, when you have paints that have um, been sitting for a while, they can 
dry out a little bit and you know they're not as good so I've just kind of topped that up a wee bit like that if you're changing colours it's always good just to give it a wipe with another piece of kitchen roll like that just give it a good wipe acrylic dries really fast so that's really good I'm quite happy about that so I don't have a lot of space in between here so I'm going to go down a dot I think I'm going to change to this size um, and I'm going to put that in there it's easier to dot with smaller dot tools I find you'll get maybe more paint out of the smaller size more um, mileage but because it's a smaller surface area it's easier to get it even like that so I tend to do my dots up down left right and then in between a bit like compass points I guess so I'm going to change my color again I'm going to go for white this is a nice sort of metallic white it's always good practice to kind of shake your paints that's another way of trying to get consistency or an even kind of consistency and I'm going to do in between the spaces now in between the spaces of my previous row and this is a newer paint so you can see the difference it's really quite fluid I tend not to push down too much with my dotting tool because you squeeze the paint out from underneath the surface and you can get a kind of funny effect so yeah you just kind of gently press the tool lightly onto the surface I, I don't it's not like a stamp if that makes sense you're not stamping the paint on you're just gently sort of um, letting it rest like that there so I'm just going to give that a little wipe so I tend to work from the middle out and then I'll come back in again and I'll do tiny dots and that's what really makes the design come to life I've found it's quite amazing actually how that works so I'm going to change to a matte green I don't know this is quite an old of paint so it'll be interesting to see how that comes out yeah there's a wee bit of brown oh, lovely <laughs> but sometimes it's nice to work with contrast where you've got maybe a metallic paint and then you're bringing in a matte sort of effect I quite like doing that and just testing it there yeah it looks okay and it should show up quite well because it's on that black surface yeah. maybe just topping that up gently there you literally get a feel for a mandala stone painting you'll get a feel for dotting the more you do it's a bit like crochet or knitting or any of these sort of crafty things the more you do it the better you get and the quicker you get actually so this is going into a kind of diamond shape so I'm going to bring it out here and here and you can play about with different colours you know different colour schemes you can have hot colours you can have cold colours you can have a mixture of both and you get a contrasty design some people are quite into the idea of drawing in the grid first of all I don't do that uh, but I could do another tutorial to show you how to work with a grid if you need that sort of precision and you're happy to work like that so I've got a nice vibrant green and I think I'm going to step up in size I'm going to go for the bigger size again and I'm going to go to gold I love this gold oh my goodness it's just so rich wow when you get into mandala stone painting you'll find that you don't really 
worry about it as much, you know, getting it perfect, you can enjoy the process more and it becomes almost calming in the mind because it's a repetitive action. Anything that you repeat tends to calm the brain and, um, you know, mandala stone painting has been used by Buddhist monks as a t form of meditation. They do it with sand and they make these beautiful artworks and then they blow them away at the end. You know, but it's this kind of comment on the beauty of creation and how it doesn't need to last forever. It's almost like the process is beautiful and so is the actual outcome. And then, like the breath, it just blows away. And so it's quite fascinating. It takes them a long, long time to make them as well. Human beings can be quite fascinating, can't they? I love that gold. Okay, so I'm going to go back to white. I'm just going by intuition here, what I think might look good. I've never, never tried these colour combinations before. So, you know, I'll, I'll be quite pleased if, if it works out. I like it when you get that little peak and then it just sort of mellows out and just sort of sits nice and smooth like that. I love these colours. I think they just symbolise springtime for me and hopefulness and, you know, the idea that we're kind of starting again and, you know, the cleanness about the white, obviously, purity, colours can symbolise so many different things. There we go. Yep, I'm okay with that. So I can travel out with that black initial sort of circle and you can see how the black absorbs colour but it's pushing those colours forward and that kind of creates the, the effect for a mandala stone, in my opinion anyway. It really creates that kind of visual wow, like oomph, if you like. So I'm going to try this dark blue on the outside, um, but yeah, it's, it's an old one, this. Let's see how that comes out. I'm just thinking of excuses. Yeah, that's pretty thick paint. Whoa. Okay. So. I might get away with it, I'll just test it. Oh, a nice thick. If your acrylic paint is too thick, you're going to get this. You're going to get peaky, pointy bits there. They're not so good because they dry like that. And um, you kind of want a smooth dot. So some acrylic paints that I've used in the past are not as good. And uh, that's why I tend to go with the Ducraft Artiste ones because... You know, I've had those ones for quite some time now and they're still decent, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm finding with the, the kind of cheaper quality, it's not giving me a good dot the same way, as you can see. So this is just in a sketchbook, so I'm not too concerned. I'm not exactly creating a final piece there and I'm going over my lines and I'm being a bit, a bit naughty actually but you know I forgive myself <laughs> there we are um, I might actually do another colour just in there another one in between the spaces to finish that off and I'm just trying to work out which one it will be that will stand out let's see well the metallic green, let's see what green on green looks like because it's just to show you the difference. If you have similar colours, they don't stand out. You don't get the same visual contrast, see? Just kind of becomes complementary or, you know, harmonious. It just harmonises there. It's just kind of virtually going to disappear. Um, you know, 